Hello and welcome to the Haas Tip of the Day. My name is Mark and I think you've seen our topic. We're going to show you how easy it is to avoid running into problems, literally, when we do tool changes with trunnions and tall fixtures on our table. Now it looks like we have plenty of room between our drill and the trunnion to do a tool change, but we don't. When that tool change is commanded, the double arm is going to move down by maybe four and a half inches, and we don't have four and a half inches of clearance. Now our solution is to alias our own M6 tool change command. Then each time an M6 is commanded, the trunnion is going to straighten itself out, move to a safe position before the machine changes tools. Now if you already know how to alias an M or G code, this next part will come easy. If you don't, we've created another tip of the day video that covers aliasing M and G codes. Be sure to check that out. Today, we're going to alias our M6 command by going to parameter 81, M macro call 09000, and we're going to set that to a 6. This means anytime we enter an M6 from the control and run that code, the control is going to run subprogram 9000. We're going to create that 9000 program now. Our 09000 program is going to move each of our machine axes into a safe tool change position. That position is going to be based on our machine coordinate system, G53. Now G53 is non-modal, which means that we must command a G53 on each and every positioning line. Now what's the safest position to do a tool change? I don't know. We're going to go back to the machine, jog each axis one at a time, and look at the machine position, and write that number into our program. I'm going to jog the z-axis up and away as far as it'll go, and look at my machine position. My machine position is z.696. I'm going to enter that value into my program. z.69. Now I didn't use a Z0 because I wanted every bit of clearance I could get to get up and above that trunnion. Now on some machines, like a UMC, we might have two and a half inches of clearance above Z0. So getting that number for each and every machine that you're working on is important. Next, we'll move our A and our Y axis and find out what those perfect tool change positions are. It looks like A0 for this setup is just perfect. And moving my Y, it looks like machine Y0 will work out great for us as well. I'm going to go ahead and enter those into my program. Now we just have to find our X position. Now it looks like the best place for us to do a tool change is at X minus 40. That's our X travel limit. Now it's worth mentioning that when we mounted this trunnion on the machine, we didn't put it on the center of our X travel. We put it as far to the right as we could, which leaves us room on the left side of the table to do safe tool changes. Our program is almost finished. We just need to add a tool change command and finish our subprogram, like all subprograms, with an M99. Now we use an M16, not an M06. Had we used an M6 tool change command, our subprogram would have looped forever and given us a nesting too deep alarm at the control. M16 and M6 do the exact same thing, but we must use an M16 when aliasing an M6 command. Now there are a couple settings that are worth mentioning. They're so important that they can't wait until the end of the video. We've aliased an M6 command, but there are other ways to do tool changes. We could have pressed the ATC forward or the ATC reverse button, or even pressed power up restart. To protect ourselves in those cases from collisions during tool changes, there are a couple settings that we can change. The first is setting six, front panel lock. If we turn that on, that's gonna disable the ATC forward and the ATC reverse button, as well as the clockwise and counterclockwise spindle buttons. This will force the operator to use an M6 and MDI to command a tool change. The second setting that we want to talk about is 81, tool at power up. If we change this to a zero, the control will not command a tool change when the power up restart button is pressed. Now that we've covered that, let's see how our alias M6 does. Well, I've entered an M6 T3 into MDI. Now we're gonna watch it run.
Well, there we have it. Don't forget about those settings that we spoke about and to click on today's bonus content, which includes that alias M&G code video. Thanks for watching this Haas Tip of the Day. Thank you.